we must be more effective at engaging other people in the fight against terror. The public, including the business community, have to be encouraged to be more interested in their own security. There can be no freedom and no prosperity without security. As well as every cop becoming a counter-terrorism cop, we need every citizen to be a counter-terrorism citizen. And I would suggest to you that every responsible business also needs to be a counter-terrorism business. And what do I mean by that? The public need to be educated in the threat and know what to look out for and how to report it. So we stop patronizing the public. We tell them what the threat is and how they can best defend themselves. The latest iteration of that will happen just before Black Friday when the shopping season starts. And please follow our ACT campaign, Action Counters Terrorism media campaign this winter. So too, the business community have a moral as well as an economic interest in protecting their customers and workforce, but who have to grapple with additional, more complex challenges such as identifying potential insider threats in the workforce and improving their protective security stance while ensuring they still remain accessible to their customers. I get that. And despite these challenges, businesses need to become more engaged in the protection of their communities as they are in focusing on their economic well-being. There can be no prosperity without security. Of course, I'm not alone in considering these two facts intrinsically linked, thanks to Paul Ray. I see the work they do as truly innovative, not least through the development of the Vulnerability Self-Assessment Tool and the new Information Exchange Hub, but as part of their wider commitment to developing an ecosystem that aims to design, promote, and share protective security best practice. We're particularly proud of our e-learning tool, and our e-learning tool now has been signed up to by over 1,800 businesses. More than 500,000 employees have signed on and taken that uh, particular awareness package. 91% of them say they'd recommend it. This is something to be very proud of. We're trying to educate and get businesses to educate their own staff, and it's being as successful. Through Paul Ray's two particular resources, that's a huge opportunity to its members to assess, identify, and mitigate your security weaknesses. And that can only benefit the wider community by improving the overall level of security and provide a potential financial incentive to the individual business through reducing your insurance premiums. I wholeheartedly support Paul Ray's commitment in this area. Again, there can be no prosperity without security. I do, however, accept there will be individual financial and operational constraints for any given business as to the scope of their protective security regime that they can reasonably be expected to implement. No more so for, than for SMEs, who are, of course, 80% of our economy. And therefore, despite such security measures, there will always remain a possibility that an attack can nevertheless impact upon a business, either directly or indirectly. Again, I support Paul Ree's efforts to address this issue by closing the non-damaged business insurance gap through its engagement with government, and I thank those members of government here today. Again, there can be no prosperity without security. That our threat level remains at severe with an attack highly likely, despite the collective efforts of that world-class machine, is why the private sector must remain conscious of their vulnerabilities and be able to assess and take responsibility for their own security wherever possible. So what am I most worried about for the future? What's keeping me awake at night? Well, that threat, as I described it, has stabilized at a new high level. It's not increasing, but it's not reducing either. Extremism, that is increasing, both Islamist and far right. Societal cohesion and a long-term strategy to improve the chances for everyone after 10 years of austerity will be necessary as a protection against those who want to fight back against society, whatever their ideology and I don't yet see a concerted strategy in that direction. The internet and encrypted and communications platforms continue to be the most insidious mechanism for spreading terrorism, and we need to continue to work with the providers of those services to make it a hostile place for terrorists and criminals. Our greatest invention is also, for me, one of our greatest problems. <laughs>